Yeah, it's, it's mandatory. I mean, we're using Simulink for every single lab. And we're going to be writing code in MATLAB. I mean, this is basically a, a Simulink lab. That's how I think of it. Okay, I'm going to get my slides pulled up and then we'll start. Hey, Professor, are we working primarily within MATLAB or Simulink today? Uh, primarily Simulink, but we're going to be writing code in MATLAB as well. Okay, just trying to pick which of these should be my primary monitor. Okay, yeah, I would probably do use Simulink at least for now. Okay. Okay, yeah, so sorry, I almost got my stuff ready. I was a little late today. Okay, so now I'm going to share my screen. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do today, um, I think we're going to go over the analytic solution that we made last time for just a random ODE. So I'm going to get that pulled up so you can uh, follow along. Okay. All right, so this is what we solved for last time on the right here. So we're first going to go over this inside of um, Simulink and MATLAB. Uh, probably just Simulink, actually. We're just going to make the model, and then we'll go over the model for the lab, and then we'll also go over the MATLAB code. But I want to go over this, too, inside of Simulink so you can kind of get a better idea of how to make these models in general. Okay, so go ahead and open up Simulink. Sorry, I'm getting it opened up on my other laptop too. So if you're inside of MATLAB, again, we can open up Simulink using two different methods. We can either, either go up top here on the top uh, kind of toolbar, I guess, and we can click on Simulink, or we can type in Simulink inside of the command window. And then we're gonna click on blank model. Uh, 
All right. Okay, this is what I wanted opened up earlier. We'll get that. Okay, uh, I need to download this. Sorry everything's taking so long right in the beginning here. Should have done this before. Okay, so I got everything ready now. Okay, so we have our model here. So this is the EOM that we're gonna model. I may it's a little hard to see, but it's XFT equals minus 1.1.12 e to the minus 1.6t plus 0.3 e to the minus 8.1t plus 0.821 cosine t plus 0.662 sine of t. Really wonderful equation there. Um, so let's go up top. I just want to show you the FPD that we made. So this FPD that we have is going to be pretty similar to what we have for the submarine towing lab, if you remember from last time. So in this case, I just have, you know, just one mass here. I have a spring, I have a damper, and then I have an external excitation, which is F of T. In this case, it's five times cosine of T. So I think last time I did show you the model briefly inside of Simulink, but I didn't really go over it that much. So this time we're actually gonna make it, we'll go um, you know, somewhat slow for this, but I'm gonna focus more on the model for the, uh, for the submarine towing lab. But I kinda wanna just expose you to what this is going to look like. Okay, so we are gonna, let's move this over here. Move this down here. Okay. So first thing you want to open up the library browser. So remember the library browser, that's gonna be what we use to import all of our blocks. Or on the Simulink workspace or canvas, we can uh, just click on it and then we can type in whatever block we want to import. Okay, I'm gonna go back down. I'll just tuck that away. All right, so first thing we're gonna do, let me put it up here. I want you to see the equation of motion. I'll just leave it like that. Not great, but whatever. If you have it on, uh, like if you have the this PDF to the side of your screen or something, then that's going to work out well too. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is uh, let's import a an integrator. So you can either go again in the library browser here, and that you can enter a commonly used block. So there's integrator right there. And we can left click and drag it in to the canvas. Okay, so we have one and we're gonna need another one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click on this integrator block and then I will just drag. So I'll right click, drag, and then I just copied that block. Okay, so we have these two uh, so for now, I'm just going to click and drag this node to the other block here. Uh, 
Okay, so right now it's uh it's a little hard to see, but once you start making these uh these models, it'll start to make more sense basically. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna left click and I'm just gonna start typing. So I'm gonna type in uh, acceleration. And then you'll see that it shows create acceleration annotation. So I'll click enter and now I have this annotation and I'm gonna move it over to the left right here. And I'm just gonna, we're gonna connect this later but I'm just gonna drag that out. Okay, and then I'm gonna create another annotation, this time for velocity. So I'll just start typing in velocity. And then it'll show create velocity annotation. Okay, and then now we have that. Okay, so what we wanna do again is we wanna model this EO1 map here. So really what we're gonna do inside of Simulink here is x double dot plus cm or c divided by m x dot plus k divided by mx equals f of t over m. So we're going to model that and then we can specify in MATLAB what numbers we want to use inside of Simulink. So we're going to keep, um, basic, we're going to use variables inside of Simulink. So if we want to change some of these parameters, say we want to change f of t to you know, seven times cosine of t, we could do that um, just on the fly. Or if we wanna change the mass or the, the spring stiffness, we can do that because it's going to be, uh, the number's gonna be assigned to that variable. Okay, and then we're gonna make one more annotation here for position. So again, we're just gonna left click on the canvas and type in position and press enter. And let's click and drag this down here. And we're gonna drag this node out. All right, is everyone following along so far? Oh, sorry, I didn't see some of your, your comments. Okay, so Eric, it's hard to watch and use MATLAB at the same time on your laptop. <laughs> Should you get an extra monitor? I mean, it helps, but that's a lot of money. Um, yeah, it is harder because in the class, you know, we, you could just look at the, the screen projector and then you'd use the computers in class. Monitors are actually pretty cheap these days. Yeah. I mean, what's, what's a, the cheapest one, like a hundred? I don't know. I have to do some research, but you don't need like a super, like a gaming one or whatever. Just get a cheesy one. Yeah, yeah you could. Okay, so Adrian, is it important? Is it important to connect the annotation to the arrow? So no, we're, right now the annotation is free. So, so right now it's actually not connected to anything. I can move this around. The lost in position. Do you just mean the annotation? So yeah, okay, to create an annotation, you just left click on the canvas and then you start typing whatever you wanna make for an annotation. So I can just type in annotation and then you should uh, see this box here where it says create whatever annotation. And then you can press enter. I, I had a question about this. Um, uh, about why you chose the integrators. I mean, I, I get that you're uh, integrating acceleration and you get velocity and then you're integrating that and you get position, but um, like what's the relation to the equation of motion that we're dealing with? Um, yes, yeah, so right now it looks kind of weird. I think it'll make more sense once we actually build the model, then you can actually kind of visualize the equation of motion. Right now this is just, you know, this part is going to represent the acceleration. So X double dot and our EOM. And then we need to integrate that to have, you know, X dot in the EOM. And then we need to integrate that to have x in the EOM. So yeah, we're just we, taking like the x dot and then like the x double dot position or parts of the uh, equation. Is that what we're doing right now? Yeah. Yeah, right now this is, all this represents right now is x double dot plus x dot plus x. That's all we have right now. Okay. 
All right, so now we have those. So what we want to do now is start, you know, filling in this EOM. So again, what we have is just X double dot. That's basically right here, acceleration. Then we integrated that. So then we have X dot and then we have X over here. But, you know, we want to have X double dot plus um, C divided by M X dot and then plus K divided by M X. So to do that, we're going to use a gain block. So you can either go under commonly used blocks here in the library browser, or you can uh, just type in gain on the canvas. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is type in gain. So I'm just, you know, I left clicked on the canvas here, and then I'm just gonna start typing in gain. And then that's gonna show up. So I'll just press enter, and then here's our gain block. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is, so right now the gain block is selected, and I'm gonna press control and then I, and that's just going to invert the block so it's facing the other direction. Okay, so in case you missed that, it's control I to invert the block. Okay, so now we have this block. And again, what we want to do is have um, C divided by M X dot. So to do that, we have our gain block here. And I'm going to click on, click on this node, and then I'll just click and drag up to velocity. And then I'm going to double click on the gain block. Then we're going to type in here, just C divided by M. It might be a little small on your screen if you have a smaller monitor, but we're just typing in C divided by M. And then we'll click apply. Okay, so now what we've done is we have X double dot, and then right here we have um, C divided by M X dot. So we don't have addition yet. We're gonna get to that later on, so. Hey, Professor. Yeah. Did you, you typed the C dash M into the gain portion when you double clicked it? Yeah. Yes, you divided by M right there. Okay. Mine looks a little different. Yours still says K, but now mine says C over M and it gives me like an error. Um, did you write it or something? Yeah, I, I wrote it. Or what did you run the, this model? Uh, I did don't you think press so. run up top or you just typed in C divided by M? <clears throat> yeah, I just pressed C divided by M apply, okay. Okay. Um, yeah, so you might have an error, maybe depends on your version of MATLAB, but you're going to have an error because right now C and M, they aren't defined. We're going to define that later on inside of MATLAB. So if you have an error, don't worry about it yet. <coughs> yeah, some of you have errors. Yeah. Yeah. So on my other computer, I actually have this model pulled up and I have that error as well. But again, we're going to basically assign that variable inside of MATLAB later on, and then you're, it's going to be able to run fine. So don't worry about that right now. Okay, so we uh, have... Yeah. Sorry, just to make sure, um, it's okay that it says C over M, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. it says okay, on, yeah, on my laptop, it says C divided by M2, but I don't know if it's uh, just because of my operating system on the screen right now. You know, I'm using Linux here and it's MATLAB is a little different. You know, for the most part, it's the same, but yeah. On your screen, it might say C divided by M inside of that gain block, like right here. So what I'll actually do is I'll actually just change that annotation. So all I did there was, you know, clicked on the text beneath the gain block and typed in C divided by M. Okay, so I wanna go over this again. So right now, we just have X double dot, and now we have C divided by M X dot right here in this highlighted portion. And then over here we have X. So we have all of those, but there's no um, addition yet. So we don't have X double dot plus C divided by M X dot. We'll do that, you know, in a bit. Okay, so yeah, Tyler says if you hover over the error, it just says undefined variables. So yeah, we'll, we'll define those in a bit. 
Okay, so now we want to do k divided by mx. So we're going to do something very similar to what we just did here. So again, I'm going to go over this gain block and I'm just going to right click and drag. And that's going to copy that gain block for me. And then I'm going to change uh, the gain block. So we want k divided by m. So I'm going to double click in the gain block. And then instead of c divided by m, I'm, I'm going to type in k divided by m. Now I'll press apply and then OK. Now from this, I'm going to left click and drag. And we're going to connect this to the position error that we had. Let me change this now. This is k divided by m. Okay, so now we're, we're getting somewhere now. So we have x double dot. Here we have c divided by m x dot. And here we have k divided by m x. And we have multiplication here. You know, it's k divided by m times x because we're using this gain block. That's uh, basically multiplication. And remember to pan around if you guys forgot from last time. You just need to uh, go on the center part of your scroll wheel, we'll press down on the scroll wheel of your mouse, and then you can move your mouse around to pan around. If you're using a trackpad, it's probably different. Uh, Patrick? Yeah. Uh, so if we had something in front of the X double dot, we would have to do another gain, right? Am I understanding uh, yeah. correctly? Yeah. Okay. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so your model should look like exactly what I have right now. Um, but what, what we want to do is, you know, we want to add all of these up because that's what we have in the equation of motion up top. So to do that, I'm going to left click on the canvas and I'll type in sum. So SUM, and I'll press enter. And then we have a summation block right here. Um, it's also under commonly used blocks if you want to get it from there. Okay, so for this, I'm also going to select this block. And then I'll do control I to invert the block again. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is we're going to add all of this up. So here I have this block, and you see when I left click and I drag it, I get these like phantom lines that show up when I, you know, get aligned to another block. So, you know, I like to make my models as neat as I can. So I'm just going to line it up like that. And I'll also connect to this other block here. Okay, so now what this model is, is it's x double dot, and now we have plus c divided by m x dot plus k divided by m x. So we have that addition out because of this summation block here. Okay. All right, so now we have that. Um, now we have one more thing that we have to add here, which is um, our, our forcing function. Okay, so we have to add that as well. So uh, we have five times cosine of t and divided by m. Okay, so we have this right here, basically f of t divided by m. So we have to get that in our canvas here. So the first thing I'll do is I'll type in sign. So we'll have to click on the canvas and type in sign. And I'll press enter. That's actually not what I wanted. I want to sign wave. So left we'll click on the canvas, type in sign, and then you'll see sign wave. So we'll go there and then we'll press enter. Okay, so now we have that. Let me move this around a bit. So they give you, uh, Simulink gives you a sine wave, but they don't give you a cosine wave. So we can get that just by differentiating sine. 
So just like we have an integrator block, we also have a differential block. So yeah, they call it derivative. So just type in derivative and we'll press enter. And now we have a derivative block. Okay, and then I'm just going to connect these two blocks right here. I'm gonna change this annotation just because I think it's helpful. I'm gonna do just uh, sine of t. I'm gonna move these over. Okay, and then now if I extend this part here, I'm going to um, add an annotation here where I'm gonna say convert to cosine. Okay, because that's, that's basically what we're doing here. We have a sine block, we're going to differentiate sine of t and that'll give us cosine of t. Okay, so we have that. We have, basically right now we have cosine of t, but we need five times cosine of t. So I'm going to go back to our sine block here and I'm gonna double click on it. And then under amplitude, I'm gonna put in five. Okay, so we have five. And then click apply and okay. All right, now we have that. Um, now I need divided by m. Okay, so we have five times cosine of t divided by m. So we're just gonna use a gain block once again. So I'll go to a gain block, I'll right click and drag, and then I'm going to invert this just so it's uh, in the orientation that we want. And then I'll double click on that gain block and I'll do one divided by m. Apply, okay, and then I'll do one divided by n. And then I will connect these. Okay, so there we go. All right, so right here, what we have is five times cosine of t. So that's this portion five times cosine of t, and then divided by m. So all of this five times cosine of t divided by m. So I'll make an annotation just so we kind of have a better idea of what we're looking at here. Five cosine of t divided by m. I said I don't need that. All right, so now what I have to do is, you know, I wanna add this into our summation block here. So I'm gonna double click on this and I'm going to add in another plus sign. And I'll click and drag this just like that. Okay, I'm gonna look at my model. You can do this in different ways, but I'm gonna check how I did it just on my model so I'm consistent with that. Okay, yeah. So we have x double dot plus c divided by m x dot plus k divided by m m x equals five times cosine of t divided by m. So in my model on my laptop, I modeled this equation of motion up here. So I did x double dot equals negative c divided by m x dot minus k divided by m x plus f of t divided by m. So we can easily change our model here to kind of match this. So, you know, they can be equivalent. We just are, we have it uh, rewritten where we have, you know, some of our terms on one side and some on the other. Yeah, gain blocks are used as multipliers. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so to change this, all I'm gonna do, again, I wanna change our model here to match x double dot equals negative c divided by m x dot minus k divided by m x plus f of t divided by m. 
Okay, so there's a question, how do we get the extra input for the summation block? So you're just gonna double click on the summation block and then you can just add in another sign. So you could put a plus sign or you could put a minus sign. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let me actually type this out. I wanna just you know, be very explicit for what we're modeling. So I'm gonna create another annotation basically. So unfortunately I don't have you know, good formatting here. It seemingly doesn't support that. But I'm gonna type with the equation of motion that we wanna model. So x double dot equals minus c divided by m, x dot minus k divided by m, x plus five cosine of t divided by m. Okay, so that's the equation of motion that we're modeling here. But so far we have all um, addition terms. So I wanna have minus C divided by M X dot. So that's right here. And minus K divided by M X. So to do that, I can go to this uh, summation block. And I'm going to change these first two signs here to minus signs. And now those are minus signs in the summation block. So I knew that it was the first two signs because I added that third sign uh, for this term over here. Okay, and now all we have to do to finish this model is take this uh, node from the summation block and connect it to our acceleration. So there we go. Similarly can be a little annoying. All right, so that's our equation of motion. So I'm gonna go over this again, just so we're you know, explicit on what, we, what we're doing. So all of this right here, it's modeling our equation of motion right here, which is x double dot equals minus c divided by m, x dot minus k divided by m, x plus five times cosine of t divided by m. So here we have x double dot. So you'll see that um, all of our stuff, you know, we're adding it and it's going to equal um, acceleration right here. I'm going to touch on that part in just a second. But we have acceleration, so x double dot. And then we have our velocity, in this case, c divided by m x dot. And remember, we have minus c divided by m x dot. So that's why we have this minus sign for the summation block. And then we have k divided by mx. And then over here we have five times cosine of t divided by m. And because our equation of motion is x double dot equals all of what I just uh, talked about, that's why we're using the summation block and that's going to acceleration. And that's what uh, allows us to model this as x double dot equals all of that stuff. So that uh, that summation block kind of like serves as like an equals symbol in a way? Yeah, yeah, in a way. Okay. All right, so does that make sense? I know that it's kind of a lot to take in on, you know, all at once, but that's why I wanted to first show you this. And then hopefully once we go over the submarine problem, it'll kind of reinforce some of this stuff. I'm sorry, could you reiterate uh, how everything adds together one more time to create this equation? Sure, yeah. Let me just move that. Okay, so what we're modeling is our equation of motion is right here, but what's highlighted. So that's x double dot equals minus c divided by m x dot minus k divided by m x plus five times cosine of t divided by m. So that's this uh, equation up top right here. So our acceleration is just x double dot. So that's what we have right here. This is our acceleration. And you'll see that everything in our model here, it's kind of plugging in into acceleration because of this summation block. So that's what is allowing us to do x double dot equals all of this stuff. Okay, so we have that, so this is acceleration. 
Then we're going to use our integrator here. Now it'll give us velocity. So this is x dot. And we want to model this as minus c divided by m x dot. So we have velocity. And then we need to multiply that by minus c divided by m. So we have our gain block here for minus c divided by m. And then we want a minus sign. So I used a minus sign in the summation block. Now we need to integrate that to get position. So we have x right here. But from the equation of motion, we want minus k divided by m times x. So we're going to, again, use a, a gain block. So we have minus k divided by m, and that's multiplied by x, our position. And that is also, you know, we want minus k divided by m times x. So we're using a minus sign in the summation block right here as well. And then the last part is plus 5 times cosine of t divided by m. So for that, we started out with sine of t because we don't have a cosine wave um, inside of Simulink. So we have sine of t. But so for this, we have to specify 5 times cosine of t. So we have to actually go in to the block and change our amplitude to 5. Now we need a cosine wave, so we're going to differentiate the sine wave. So this block here is just a, I'm just taking the derivative of sine of t. So at this point right here, we have 5 times cosine of t, what's highlighted right there. Then we need, uh, you know, what we need though is 5 times cosine of t divided by m. So we're using a gain block, and we're multiplying by 1 divided by m. So all of this gives us 5 times cosine of t divided by m. And from our equation of motion, we have a plus sign. So in the summation block, we just have a plus sign. And then again, all of this, all of this stuff here, I can't really highlight it all. Maybe I can. No. Okay, but all of our stuff here on the right-hand side of our equation of motion that's all getting plugged into our summation block, and that's going to the acceleration kind of term right here. And that's letting us model this as x double dot our acceleration equals all of the other stuff. Does that kind of make sense? Yeah, I get it now. I was confused about the, uh, the summation block, uh, making everything equal to the acceleration, but I, I think I get it now. Okay, yeah. When I first saw it, when I took this class, it was kind of weird too, but um, that's how it's going to work for us. Okay, so this is all we're going to go over for, for this part of the class. Um, so you can model this on your own just if you're curious. You, know, you can have all of this. You can go into MATLAB, assign your variables, uh, put in your equation of motion that you solve for analytically. And then you can compare your analytic solution to the Simulink solution. So this is the code here. I can actually upload this code if you guys want. So you can kind of compare what you have versus what I have. Um, but if we run this code, let me get all the stuff out of the way. So for our green, curve here. That's the analytic solution that I made. And then the blue kind of dashed line, it might be hard to see on your screen. That's the simulink solution. So it's a little off. I think that's just because of rounding errors that I had when I made my analytic solution. Because uh, once we do the towing lab, our analytic solution and the simulink solution, they're going to be like right on top of each other. Um, but I'm not going to go over the MATLAB code for this for this example here, just because that's what we're going to do later on today, and that's going to take, you know, a bit of time. So do you guys want me to upload this? I, I can upload this code just so you can, you know, get a bit more practice. But I would recommend actually working on it yourself first and then verifying that it worked. Okay, yeah, I'll upload it then. Okay, so if you want to, you know, double check your work, make sure that you save this Simulink uh, model here. 
or you can just work on it again on your own. So I'm going to close out of this though. I'm not going to save it because I already, you know, have this model. But now we're going to work on the, the submarine problem. So are there any questions that I can answer first before we get started? Okay. All right, so I'm going to pull up the problem description. I think I put it up here. All right, so I also uploaded slides too last night. So um, yeah, all the slides are on Canvas if you want to look at that as well. Okay, so so today we're just going to make the model again inside of Simulink, and then we're going to use MATLAB as well, where we're going to um, get our model and basically import it to MATLAB, and then we're going to write some code. I have a slide for that too. But okay, so our hashtag goals here: um, we want to make the Simulink model. Just said that using our EOM, and we want to take our MATLAB code that. So we're going to write MATLAB code to solve for the deliverables that we have. So that's going to be taking our model, importing it into our MATLAB uh, script, and then we're going to assign some arrays for our imported data. And then we're just going to solve for some stuff and make some plots and compare the analytic and simulink solutions. So your comparison here for the analytic and simulink solutions That'll be for a position plot, position versus time, velocity versus time, and acceleration versus time. I also uploaded a deliverables document. I think I did. If I didn't, I'll, I'll uh, upload it after class. Oh, I didn't. All right, so I have a deliverables document though. So yeah, I'm gonna upload this. Okay, but here are your deliverables. So pretty much everything in here, almost everything was taken from the lab handout that's on Canvas. Um, but yeah, so we'll go over this a bit later, but this is everything here. It looks like a lot, maybe it is, but we're gonna be doing most of this right now. Okay, so problem description. So this will just be some review of you know, what we're actually solving for. So we have a ship that's towing a submarine and we're using a nylon cable to, you know, to attach the two of them. So from that, we can model the system as a spring mass damper um, system. So here's our FBD right here. So this is the submarine. To the right here, we have our cable, our towing cable. And then to the left here, we have our damper from basically from the viscous drag from the waves. Okay, so we solved for the mass last time for the submarine, that was 1000 slugs. And we solved for the cable stiffness, that was negative 1666 pounds per foot. And then we had the wave viscous drag that was given to us, that was 1200 pound second per foot. And we were told that our towing ship that was moving at a constant speed of uh, five feet per second. And that when the towing cable becomes taut, that's um, when our basically our time starts at time t equals zero. So remember, our, uh, our experiment here is kind of divided up into two different scenarios. So our first scenario had a cable length of 300 feet. And later on, we were like, you know, I want to decrease the maximum amount of force that's on the cable. So I'm going to increase the length and that'll make the maximum force less. So uh, situation one is a cable length of 300 feet and situation two is a cable length of what we solved for 694.5 feet. So that was given a damping ratio of 0.707, I think it was. 
And then the last part, we're going to compare the analytic and simulink solutions. So really exciting stuff. Okay, so our equation of motion is gonna be right here. So we have x double dot equals minus k divided by m x minus c divided by m x dot plus k divided by m b times t. So it's a pretty similar solution or model that we just modeled. But instead of five times cosine of t divided by m, we have k divided by m times the velocity of the submarine multiplied by t. So I need to follow up with another picture of a dog, well, my dog, being a good little, good, little good girl on the side yard. Okay, so let's make this model now. So let's open up Simulink again. So I'll just type in Simulink, and we're gonna make a blank model. So if you have this opened up, you know you can make it um, maximum, make it your full screen here. So this is the model that we're going to make right here. I want to actually kind of tuck this away though, so it's not in the way. And I'm going to open the model up on my other computer. Okay, so um, if you want to pan, and I'm sure a lot of you already figured this out if you're using a laptop, but if you want to pan around inside of Simulink on a laptop, you need to press the space bar, and then you can move around. You can click and drag. All right, so let's, uh, we're going to actually write out our equation of motion on Simulink here. So we'll do x dot dot equals minus k divided by m x dot or sorry x minus c divided by m x dot and then plus k divided by m b2 times t All right, so let's get to modeling. So first thing we'll do, we're gonna build it the same way we did last time. So I need an integrator block. So I'm just gonna type in integrator. I think that's a lot faster than, you know, going to the library browser and selecting a block. Okay, oops. All right, so here's our integrator block. I'm gonna left click and I'm gonna make an annotation now for acceleration. And I'll make another one for velocity. And then another one for position. Okay, now I'm going to right click on our integrator block here and drag. And then I'll connect those two blocks. I'll take that out here, take that out, make this a little bit better. Okay, there we go. So now we have x double dot for acceleration, x dot for velocity, and then x for the position. Okay, so that's pretty basic. We just did that. We know what to do. Okay, so now we have um, minus c divided by m x dot. So let's do that first. So all we're gonna do is take a gain block. So I'm gonna type in gain. Then with that block selected, I'm gonna do control I to invert it. 
and then we want c divided by m. So we're going to double click on the block and change our parameter in here to c divided by m. We'll click apply, okay. And then we're gonna connect that to your velocity. So we have this term here, I can't select it, but we have c divided by m x dot. Right now it's uh, addition, but we're gonna get to that later on. So now let's do k divided by m times x. So again, I'll just right click and drag. Double click on the block and we'll do k divided by m. Click apply, okay. I'm gonna double click down here and change this to k divided by m. And I'm going to connect to that to position there. Okay, so again, for your screen, you know, inside of this gain block, you might actually see C divided by M and, and K divided by M. That's actually better. I think it looks nicer. All right, so now we're going to put in a summation block here. So I'm just going to type in sum. Here we go. And then I'm going to invert this once again. So with the block selected, I'll do control I. Actually, I'm gonna do control I again. I already made this, uh, you know, this model and I spent time making sure it looks nice. So that's why I keep looking over. I wanna basically build it the same way that I built it before, just cause it looks nice and organized as much as you can for a Simulink. So I put the summation block over here on the left. Uh, and yeah, we'll, we'll get to that in a bit. But right now I'm gonna take our summation block here I'm going to click and drag one of the nodes to C divided by M. And I'll take another one and click and drag that to K divided by M. Okay, so I'm gonna take our gain block here and I'm actually gonna drag it over here. And again, you know, that doesn't matter. I'm just making this kind of look a bit nicer. I'll move this over here. All right, so there we go. So now let's change our summation block here. So I'm all, I wanna change both of these to minus signs now. So I'm gonna double click and then I'll change the list of signs from plus signs to minus signs, click apply. Now I'm gonna connect this here. So now let's talk about what we have. So we do have, you know, a model here. It's not our finished model we're still missing something. So right now, all we have is x double dot, our acceleration here, that's equal to minus c divided by m times x dot, that's right here. And again, it's minus c divided by m times x dot, as we put a minus sign right there in our summation block. And then we have minus k divided by m times x. So here's our position, and that's multiplied by negative k divided by m. So we have k divided by m from our gain block, and the minus sign is coming from our summation block over here on the left. All right, so that's good, but we're missing plus k divided by m times the velocity times t. So it says v2, but really I can just put v because we're looking at the velocity of the submarine, and that's now, all right, the velocity of our submarine is going to match the velocity of our uh, of the towing ship once we get to steady state. But so I, I have V2 here, but really it's just going to be, you know, some velocity for our submarine. All right. Is everyone following along so far? Do you have the same model? Yep. Okay. Cool. All right, so let's add in now k, divide, k divided by m times v2 or v times t. So we need to add in one more thing. So, you know, again, we're kind of using this summation block here to 
take everything on our right hand side and set that equal to our left hand side where that's the acceleration. So to do that, we need to add another node to our summation block. So I'm gonna double click on it and then I'll add in an addition sign. And then we'll press apply and okay. All right, of course it put it there. I'm gonna change some stuff here. Okay, so all I did, I just shifted, you know, some of these nodes. So I have the same model that I just had where I have minus C divided by M times X dot, and then I have minus K divided by M times X. Okay, so now we need K divided by M times V2 times T. Okay, so yeah, let's do it like this. So the first thing we need a gain block because we're gonna do K times V divided by M. So let's right click on any gain block, right click and drag, then I'm going to do control I to invert it. And I'm going to change this. So this is going to be K times V divided by M. And then we'll double click inside of the gain block. And we'll type in K times V divided by M. Press apply. Oops, I need a multiplication sign. So K times V, so make sure you have that multiplication sign and then divide it by M. Still giving us an issue. Oh, so now it's giving me this error. I don't know why I didn't for this step before. Yeah, okay, that's fine. Okay, but yeah, make sure you K times V divided by M. So like that. Okay, so we have that, but we need times time. So to do that, you can do a few things. So you can use a clock or you can use a ramp function. So it doesn't really matter, but for this case, I'm gonna type in ramp, press enter, and now we have a ramp block. So basically, this is just going to have, you know, a signal, a signal of nothing, and then it's going to have a linear increase to a value of one. The math behind it doesn't really matter. Just think of this as T right here. So I'll just put T. So again, we can use a ramp block, or we can type in clock. And then we have a little clock here. So for now, I'm going to use just a ramp block, but later on, I'll show that you can use a clock as well, and it's going to be the same thing. But we just need some block that has, that allows us to kind of model time. So in our last example that we just went over for the um, example equation of motion, we had a, a sine wave, and that was uh, sine of t, and then it was converted to cosine of t. But since it's a sine wave, we had a function of time. Okay, so now we have this expression here that's k times v divided by m times t. So now we just need to click and drag it and put it to our summation block here. All right, so now we have our equation of motion here. So we have x double dot equals minus c divided by m times x dot, that's right here. Then minus k divided by m times x, that's right here. And then a plus k times v divided by m times t right here. And that's a plus sign. So that's why we have a plus sign in our summation block. Okay, any questions on this model? I have a question for like the ramp block. Uh, when you connect it with the gain block, is that just indicating multiplication in yeah. that? Yeah, okay. it's just K times V divided by M and then times T, which yeah, that's our ramp block. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now let's save this. So if you haven't already, make uh, sure you save it. Question? 
Uh, yeah, sorry to bother. Uh, the block before that, KV slash M, what uh, block is that? Uh, that's a ramp block. So just type ramp in, block. yeah, ramp. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you haven't saved your model yet, let's save that. So go in the top left and then go to save as. Let me put this in a different folder. Okay, so when you save your Simulink model, you're going to have an extension of .slx. So name it whatever you want. You need to start with a letter, though. Okay, so I'm, gonna, I'm just going to call this class submarine model, and then we'll save it. And you can't have any spaces either. All right, so now we have that. So let's go out of Simulink now. So you can just minimize that for now, and we're going to go into MATLAB. All right, so now we're going to make a script. All right, so I just want to make sure everyone has the model made and they saved it, right? Just put in the chat, yes or no. Okay, cool. All right, so now we're going to make a script. So if you're in MATLAB, you're going to go to the top left here and click on new script. And then you'll see a new window just popped up. That's the editor window. Okay, so you'll see here, I just changed my directory that I was in. So I just changed it to um, the directory where I just saved my Simulink model. So you want to make sure that your, your script that you're making right now is in the same directory that you saved the Simulink model in. Okay, so we're going to make a script now. I'm actually going to open this up to you. Give me a second. Okay, so we're going to start out this script just by making some comments. So we know what we're looking at if we open this up later on. So I'll just do summary and time experiment. And uh, remember from, I don't know, the second lecture or something, a percent sign that signifies or denotes a comment inside of MATLAB. So whatever we type after a percent sign, uh, MATLAB is going to ignore. Okay, so we have that. So now let's uh, make a field here to clear the memory so we don't you know, mix up any variables that we don't want to run. So our function clear, that's going to wipe out all of the variables that we have in the workspace. And then CLC, that's going to wipe out all of the text that we have. So if I type in the command window A equals 5, that shows up in the workspace. Now if I type in clear, that variable went out. And if I type in CLC, all of our text goes away. All right, so now we're going to define our knowns. So I like to, you know, have a little structure here where I make a comment for whatever I'm about to do. So we're going to define our knowns now. So first thing is our mass. So the mass of the submarine was 1,000 slugs. Okay, so I type in 1,000, and then I type in a semicolon so we can suppress the output. Now if I just run this like this, so I'm going to click Run, and now MATLAB is going to tell me to save this file. Okay, so this will pop up. Our script file needs to be a different name than our uh, model, so make sure it's different. So I'll do class submarine script. Okay, I'm going to save that. So if I run this code right now, and I didn't put a semicolon, then we see the output is m equals 1000. I don't want to see that every time I run the script, so I'll put a semicolon. Now if I run it, 
We have our variable here in the workspace, but we don't have that text output. All right, so we have mass equals 1,000. Then I'm going to make a comment for us. Sub mass, and then we'll do the units are in slugs. So and again, this is something that I always do just so I'm clear on exactly what I have. And we'll do the cable stiffness. So we'll do K equals 1666.7. We'll add in a comment, cable stiffness. And then those units are in pounds per foot. So you might be thinking, hold on, we solved for the cable stiffness. And that was negative 1,666, okay. Um, but we don't need to put a negative now because we have a negative inside of our model. All right, so that's taken care of right there. Now let's do K2. So K2, that's the cable stiffness for the second cable. And we solved that last class, that was 720. Cable stiffness config two and then pounds per foot. And we have our velocity. So this is the velocity of our towing ship. That was five feet per second. So towing ship velocity and then feet per second. And then we have one more. We have the Damping coefficient, so that was 1,200. So the viscous wave drag and the units for that are pound second per foot. All right, so there we go. I'm gonna clean this up a bit. So I'm just gonna press tab on these percent signs and then we get that that looks a bit better. Can tab on the equal signs, line those up. All right, there we go. So we got our first section done. I'll press save. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is basically take our, our script, or sorry, our model, and we're going to run that simulation. So for this, um, we could have our model just totally tucked away it doesn't even need to be opened. Again, we do need to be in the same directory, but we can write some code here to run our, or to simulate our model, and that would run without a simulink even being open. So this could be beneficial, you know, later on. Okay, so we're gonna type in sim. So that's gonna mean simulate our model. So you can type in sim, and then you're gonna type in, and, uh, in apostrophes, the file name for the model. So for me, I called it class submarine model. And I'm gonna save it again. Any questions so far? So now if I go back in the script here, now if I press run, that ran, and if you see on the right here, my error just went away for this block. So if you had an error for your blocks because you had an undefined variable, all of those errors should have gone away. Let me know if you have uh, any issues with that still. All right, looks like no. Okay, so now we're going to um, basically define some stuff. Our first, okay, we'll, we'll type this out. So one of our deliverables that we need to do is find the maximum force in our towing cable and when it occurs. So I'm gonna type in max force config one 
that's going to correspond to our cable length of 300 feet. So right now we need to um, change some stuff in our symlink model so we can find that maximum force. Okay, so we're going to be done with our scripting for a little bit here. We're going to go back into our simulink model and we got to add some stuff. So let's open that back up. All right, let's go to my slides here. All right, I didn't put in the equation for this. Let me open up some other slides really quick. So I'm going to open, open up the slides from last time. All right, so here we go. So this is the maximum force on our towing cable. Okay, so it's this expression right here. It's K times VT minus X. So this is something that we solved for last class. And now we need to modify our simulink model to basically compute this. All right, so let's do that. So we need k, and we can kind of think of v, you know, as x dot times t minus x. So let's see. The first thing we'll do, we'll do, uh, we're going to import a clock. So let's click on the canvas, type in clock, press enter. Here's our clock. So this is t. Let's rename that to t. Okay, I guess I can't name it T. So I'll just name it time. I already have T over here. That's why. Okay, so we'll call it time. Okay, now we need a gain block because we have K. So let's right click and drag. Here's a gain block. And this, we're going to double click on it and just put K. Or sorry, not K, we're doing V. So that's the velocity, and then we're going to right click and drag that. And then I'm going to, yep, okay, I'm going to call this one K. And then in this one, I'm going to assign the value of K. I'll go over all of this in a second, and I'm going kind of fast here. Okay, now I want a summation block. So I'm gonna right click and drag. Here's a summation block. Okay, here we go. All right, this is fine for now. Okay, so we need K times V times T minus X. So I can do um, the minus X part. Actually, no, I'm also going to make an annotation here just so we're clear on what we're modeling down here. So I'll do k times v. Our max force equals k times vt minus x. All right, so this is what we're modeling right here. So I can do, um, let's get our minus x in here. Okay, so we have our minus sign, and all we have to do is connect this to position. Okay, so that's pretty simple, right? All we're doing is minus x, our position. Now, I have, you know, if we look at this equation right here, we have k multiplied by negative x. So that's why we have this gain block right here. So let's connect that. So here we have k, and that's being multiplied by uh, negative x right here. Okay, now let's connect this. So 
um, this is V times T. So we have, okay, let's think about it this way. I think this will be a better way to think about it. So highlighted right here, everything that's highlighted is V times T minus X, our position X. Does everyone follow that? Okay, no one's objecting, so. Okay, so we have V times T minus X, that's what's in our parentheses. And then all of that output, so that entire expression right there, V times T minus X, that's being multiplied by K. All right, so that's our maximum force, right? So let's save this. Now I'm gonna wanna see the output for this. We don't have to do this part, but it's still, it's good to, you know, look at our output in Simulink before we go into MATLAB. So let's type in scope. And then I'm just going to connect our scope block to the output of, of our game block here. Remember everything that I have highlighted right here is our expression for the maximum force K times V times D minus X. Then I'll rename the scope block to max force. All right, so in our handout, it said to run all of our simulations for 25 seconds. So I'm gonna go up top on this top toolbar and instead of 10, that's the default for the stop time, I'm gonna type in 25. And now we can press run. Okay, that just ran. And now I can double click on the scope block here. And now we see a graph for our force versus time. Okay, so you see on the, on the X axis, that goes to 25, that's 25 seconds. Then on the Y axis here is our force, our maximum force. Well, it's our force versus time and we're gonna solve for the maximum force that we see right there. All right, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make the step size smaller because that graph, you know, looked a little bit blocky. We went over this last time how we can make it a bit more smooth. So on this top ribbon here, I'm gonna go to modeling and then I'll click on model settings. Then I'm going to, instead of doing a variable step, I'm gonna do fixed step and then I'll click on solver details, and then I'm going to type in my fixed my fixed uh, step size, and I'm going to do 0 0.01. And so this way, I'm specifying the exact step size that I want. But you know, you don't have to do that. But um, just something that I always do inside of MATLAB itself when I'm defining a step size. So this will make our plot smoother now. So now if we look at our maximum force, now we see that this graph for force versus time, it's more smooth. Did you type in 25 for the T ramp or the time clock? I typed in T equals 25 up top here for stop time. For the ramp, I left that at default. So if you double click on the ramp block over here, it'll just show slope, start time, and initial output. All of that was the default. All right, so this is good. So we have our force versus time, but we want to import this into MATLAB because we want to use this data for force versus time. And we're going to you know, make a plot for that as well. We also need to solve for that maximum force. I made the graph more precise by going up to this top ribbon here. So on top of your screen, I clicked on modeling and then model settings. And then you're gonna, under solver here, I chose fixed step. And then I went to, under solver details here, I put in 0 0.01. So you could also have a variable step and then you can change your max step size to 0 0.01, but in my case, I'm gonna use a fixed uh, step size and 
with a step size of 0 0.01. Yeah. Okay, so again, we want to take this force versus time, all of that data, and we want to export it to, to MATLAB. So to do that, we're going to use the two workspace block. That's two workspace. So we're going to type in two workspace, press enter, and then we get this block here. I'm going to take this and I'm going to just plop it down right here. So this is going to our output for the maximum force. Again, that expression is k times v times t minus x. Then I'm going to double click on this and I'm going to rename this from sim out. That's the default name. And I'm going to call this sim underscore Did you type force. for that one again? What was that? Did you type for that one again? Uh, two workspace. So just. Two workspace. Oh, okay, I see it now. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then, so yeah, that's fine just like this. Okay. Now I'm going to save this. So I'm going to go back to simulation on the top ribbon. Then I'll press save. Now I can run this again. And now if I look in MATLAB, then I see in the workspace, I have this right here, this block called out. And then we see that our two workspace block that we just defined, we see sim underscore force. And then if I double click on that, then I see the time data on the left. So that's going to go to 25 seconds. We have a lot of values because of our step size. And then our time, or sorry, our force data, that's in this right hand column. <clears throat> okay, but we're going to stick inside of the Simulink model for a little bit more. Okay, so we have our maximum force. We're also going to need to solve for the elongation in the tow, in the tow cable at steady state. Okay, so there's uh, two methods to solve for the elongation. So we have delta x equals c times v divided by t, or we can do delta x equals v times t minus x. So the first method we're going to do is this one right here, v times t minus x. So I'm going to make this right below our force, you know, where we solve for the force versus time right here. Okay, so I'm going to put this right below. Okay, so we have this expression here, V times T minus X, pretty similar to the max force. So I'm just going to make a, a whole new uh, kind of area for this though. Okay, so we, we actually could just uh, pull it from this output right here, but just to kind of keep everything in its own kind of field, so to say, I'm going to make everything new. So I can, oops, I can take these and right click and drag and have a time block and a, and a block for the velocity. So this is just V times T, and then I need minus X. So I need a summation block, take that down, connect that. So I have V times T, and then I need minus X, so I can just connect that to position right here. And then we're gonna take this out. And then we're just gonna copy a scope block And we'll connect these. And then I'll rename this elongation. And then we'll copy a two workspace block. We'll connect that. And then I'm going to rename this to sim underscore elong for elongate. All right, there we go. And I'm going to make another annotation here just so I know what I'm looking at. I open up this model. So elongation equals V times T minus X. So we have V times T and then we're, we're going to our summation block minus X that's connected to position and that's it. So then we have that output for elongation.
So let's save this and run it. And now if I double click on the elongation block, and this is our elongation over time. So we have time of 25 seconds and then our elongation here. So we're going around five. Okay, any questions so far? I know this is uh, maybe somewhat tedious. I think it's more exciting than, you know, last class we were solving for stuff by hand. Uh, is that the, what was that the elongation of the, the cable? Yeah, of the cable. Can we also um, inflect another example? Can we say that that could be like the elongation of a spring as well? Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, awesome. our cable, we're modeling that with the spring. All right, so we're gonna do a few more things here. So we need to look at our velocity and we need to look at our position and the acceleration as well. So we have a scope block here for elongation and we have one for the maximum force. So let's also get some for the, for the acceleration velocity and position. I'm gonna move this up a little. So I'll type in scope and I'm gonna copy this twice. So let's first use the scope block and we're gonna connect that to acceleration. And we'll get another scope block, attach it to velocity, and then another scope block and attach it to our position. I'll rename all of these. So acceleration, oops, velo, and then position. Did it again. All right. And then we want to export these to the workspace. So we're going to use the to workspace block again. And then I'm just going to attach that to the branch here for acceleration. And we'll also do it for position. Just gonna make this look a little neater, kind of, you know. And I don't wanna use the word OCD, but I'm kind of OCD about it. I moved it too much, okay. And then let's rename this as well. So I'm going to do sim underscore Excel. And then sim underscore velo. And sim underscore POS for position. Okay, we'll save it. We'll run it. And then let's look at some of these blocks. So I'm going to double click on acceleration. Double click on velocity. I don't know. Here we go. Double click on velocity. Oh, it's massive. Oh well. And then we'll look at position as well. All right, well, that, that doesn't really matter. I just like kind of messed up my, my windows here. That's okay. So in this graph here is acceleration, but we're gonna look at all of those graphs inside of MATLAB in a bit. Um, so the scope blocks, why are we using them? We just wanna you know quickly look at the output for whatever we're solving for. So we can do that, but we're gonna use the two workspace blocks to allow us to output whatever data we want to look at into MATLAB, and then we can work on it inside of there. All right, so does everyone have this model set up? I just have a question on like the out.sim box. What does that mean? What is that box for, or what is that box? It's to output our data that we have inside of Simulink into MATLAB, into the MATLAB workspace. Uh, okay, thanks. Yeah. So on your screen, it might look a little different too. 
it might not say out dot whatever. It might just say like a sim underscore Excel. Uh, it depends on the MATLAB version that you have. So on my laptop, it doesn't say out dot whatever. Mm -hmm. So that's fine. Okay. All right, so we're going to save that. And now we're, we're done with the Simulink model, at least for now. We're going to add one more method for looking at the elongation at steady state later on. We can minimize that. And then we can go into MATLAB. All right, let's tuck this away too. Okay, so let's run this script again. Okay, yeah. There we go. I thought for a second I didn't have all the output, but uh, so they assigned it just to one variable inside of here, which is out. So if I double click on out in the workspace, and I see my acceleration, my elongation, my force, my position, and my velocity. Right, I'm gonna open up the script on my other computer. All right, here we go. So I'm looking at my other computer. You know, I made this model in the script on, on the computer that you guys are seeing right now. Um, but it seems like, I think I have different versions of MATLAB installed or something. Because on my laptop, my output that I have, it's, it's not stored under just one variable here. It actually shows, you know, sim acceleration and sim elongation. All of those, they're their own variable um, inside of the workspace. So if your computer looks like that, then that's fine. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is solve for the maximum force. And then we want to see when that occurs. So I can double click on out and then I can go to sim underscore force. And so this is all of our force data. So I could scroll through, right? And then I could find the maximum force. Okay, do I really want to do that? Does anyone really want to do that? Obviously not. So we're gonna write some code to just do that for us. So I'm gonna type in max underscore force. So that's the variable that we're gonna use. And then I'm gonna use the function max. And then I'm gonna do sim underscore force. So let me see if this works. It might not work because of this version of MATLAB I'm using. Let's find out. Yep, and it doesn't. All right, so that might work on your computer um, because, again, there's some differences in the, in the version of MATLAB that I'm using. Into out dot. I know what my, my variable went away here. All right, give me a second. Mm -hmm. I don't know why that was renamed to answer. Okay, so that worked now, but why did it rename that? I had this issue before, and I'm thinking of how I solved it. All right, maybe it'll be fine. Um, 
just out of curiosity, how many of you have the same kind of screen? I'm oh, sorry, I didn't see someone's comment. Yeah, the single link variables do get erased, but then I, I run this simulation code right here where it's gonna simulate the simulating script so all of those variables should come back. If I didn't have this here, like if I did clear memory after, then I would get an error. So then I get this error, but I'm simulating the simulink model, so then I can run it. Yeah, I have the same thing too, where the simulink is outputting um, into like the answer thing. Okay. It's kind of weird that they did it that way. Yeah, okay, Daniel saying to do this. Uh, yep, okay, that works, yeah. I think I... I thought I updated my, my code to show this because I know I was dealing with this issue before. Yeah, you got it. Yep. Yes, yeah, so that works. Yeah, thanks for that. Okay, so there we go. So um, yeah, if you guys have a screen like mine, then do what Daniel kind of talked about. We want to make a new variable, basically, that's out in this case. And then we set that equal to uh, to run the simulation that we just had inside of our Simulink model. Okay, is anyone having any issues with this or you guys all got this uh, working fine? Okay, cool. Yeah, so I really thought I updated my script to, to actually do just this, but I guess I didn't, and the script, it works fine on my laptop, you know, with the, the stuff I had in the beginning. So, kind of weird, I think it just depends on your MATLAB version. Okay, so we have that, so we have our maximum force. And then if we click on max here, then we see our maximum force right there. Okay, so now we want to find when this occurs. So you can do this in a few different ways as well. But I'm going to do max underscore vspot equals. So basically, I'm just doing like the vertical spot. So max underscore vspot, you can call it whatever you want. And I'll do find when I'm going to do out dot sim underscore velo is equal to the maximum force. Sorry, not velo. I was looking at a different part of my code. So sim force. And then if I run that, then I can look at max v spell. Let me change the size. Uh, here. All right, so I still have an error here. This uh, difference in MATLAB is kind of frustrating me right now. Because it's working on my laptop, but I need to change the code a little bit here. Okay, so I might need to go back to this. I need to look at this after class and I'll update you on this part and I'll, you know, give you the code for it, but I can't uh, seem to fix this error right now. Because um, again, it's working on my laptop. I can run the code just fine. 
but this difference in storing simulink variables is, is causing an issue here. I think because we're not calling for the time in the code right now. We're trying to find the time when it happens, right? Yeah, yeah. See, on my, on my laptop, I have a variable called t out, and that helps too. So if I double click on out, I see there is t out right here. So it, it knows the time, and even inside of these uh, um, structures here, it has the time data as well. Let me look at my code a little more. Do you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna share my screen on my laptop. Okay, so you guys can see my screen on my laptop now. Um, so let's see. I actually want to see how many of you have your your MATLAB workspace where it looks like what I was just showing you. Okay. All right, so it looks like some of you had what I had before. So, so sorry about this issue right now. I need to figure this out because if I'm on my laptop and I run my code here, get that up. So I can run the code and it's going to give me, you know, all of my plots here. Um, but yeah, so there's a difference. You see here, my workspace, it has, um, an array for each output that I had from Simulink. So before I just had to do out dot whatever, kind of like Daniel was talking about before, but that's not seeming to work right now. So I'll update you guys and sorry about the issue here. Um, so let's, I guess we'll look at this code a little bit and I'll kind of go over, you know, the general plan of what you would do and then I'll record later on today. I'm gonna to figure this out and then I'll record a new video that goes over how to, uh, you know, write MATLAB code when you have the setup that I had, you know, just a few minutes ago. Okay, so what we would have done, you know, we, we found our maximum force, but again, we wanna find the time for when that occurs. So in this line of code here that I have highlighted, I'm saying, you know, we're going to find that max or we're going to find that spot. We're going to find the index when we had that maximum force. And then that'll give us the time for when that maximum force occurs. Okay, Kyle says maybe it's a typo. Let me check. Yeah, yeah, that didn't work. So, um, oh yeah, and that was just assigning the variable name. So, yeah, it's something else. So, yeah. Okay, so let's go back to my screen. Okay. Okay, so, the, so we would find when that time, we would find that index basically for when our Time is going to match up to when we had the maximum force on the cable. Let me move my computer. And then uh, we're creating a, a new variable called time, mf, so time is maximum force. And then we're setting it equal to the spot when that maximum force uh, occurred. And you'll see here I have t out, 
um, and maximum F spot. So when that maximum force occurred, and then comma one. So if I go into my workspace here, and I double click on max F spot. Okay, so I have that. Um, I need to look at T out, sorry. So T out, that's our time that we have from Simulink. So Simulink gives us this array here for the time. And this is going from zero to 25 seconds. So back here, I have T out. So I'm assigning a variable, a variable called time underscore MF. So time for the maximum force. Now I'm looking inside of that array called T out. And then I'm, I'm looking in um, comma one here uh, because I want to look at the first column. And I want to look at the first column for our array here, max F spot. Um, so, you know, again, I can't show you this right now because I need to figure out the naming thing for how most of you have the, the workspace set up. So it seems maybe a little abstract now. And again, sorry that that didn't work on my main computer. Uh, so we're going to do that for the force. We're going to do it for the velocity as well. And we're going to be doing that for both configurations that we have. So for the cable of a length of 300 feet and for the cable of a length of, of what was it, like 600 something feet. So basically we're just doing that. We're taking the arrays that we have from Simulink, uh, finding when the maximum force occurred. And then we're going to also look at our elongation for the tone cable and um, and like the position and the velocity. So if we look at these graphs right now, so this one here, let me maximize it. This is our velocity versus time. So this is showing it for, for both cables. So we have cable one that was 300 feet and cable two again was like 694 feet or something like that. Okay, so if we have cable one for 300 feet, we see our velocity spikes up higher than it does for cable two. This will be something that I'm going to have all of you, you know, you got to think about this and then discuss it in your report or in your memo. And Okay, so this one is our maximum force. So You'll see in blue, this is what we were looking at inside of Simulink. So it's the same graph that we had inside of Simulink, but then we exported all of that data for the force and the time. And then we uh, wrote some code inside of MATLAB to plot it. And then we have cable two, that maximum force is less. So again, you gotta think why. So, um, you know, this one's pretty easy. We have a longer cable you're going to explain this stuff inside of your report. And and we have one more, at least that I plotted here, which is our elongation versus time. So you'll see here I have two different methods. So remember I said that we could calculate the elongation in our towing cable using two different methods. So I'm showing both of those methods here for both of the cables that we have. And you'll see at steady state, they are the same, which they should be, but in the transient response, they're different. So that'll be another question that I want you to think about for the report as well. And then we also need to plot our analytic solution versus our solution from, from Simulink. So yeah, I have a few more plots here. Let me comment all of these out. I guess my, uh, the shortcut on my Mac is different. Let me do it this way. Okay, there we go. So 
So right now I'm uncommenting all of this stuff by highlight, highlighting it and then doing Command T. And then if you want to comment all of them out, you highlight whatever and then do Command R. Or maybe not on a Mac. On my uh, on a PC, you do Command R. So it can be different depending on the keyboard layout that you have. All right, so this is elongation. We already went over that one. Okay, here's acceleration. I didn't put which cable this was for. And velocity, we already talked about that. Uh, position. And I thought I had one for my, comparing my analytic solution versus the simulink. Um, I guess I didn't, but, um, but yeah, they're gonna be the same, so. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna go over right now after class how we can, you know, fix this uh, variable naming issue. So all of you can kind of, you know, work on this well uh, without any issues. But um, it seems like none of you have MATLAB, kind of like I just showed you right now my laptop, where all of my um, arrays from Simulink are their own variables inside the workspace here. Uh, so because of that, I'm gonna figure out this issue I'll upload a video, I'll let you know when that's up. It'll be later today. YouTube takes forever to process videos though, so might be a while, but, so I'll let you turn in this report um, a day later, if it's two weeks. Again, I'll also talk about that later today. Um, I think two weeks is plenty of time though to work on a report. So probably be two weeks, but uh, so I think that's all we're going to go over now because, you know, I was going to go over the rest of the coding, but again, we have that issue right now. So, uh, does anyone have any questions that I can't answer right now? Okay. Looks like no. All right. So if you don't have any questions, uh, I guess that'll be it for today. I'm gonna get that video up. Uh, the lecture, um, so I'm gonna basically start uploading this right away, but again, uh, YouTube takes a while to process it, so it might be in a few hours. Or the other lecture for talking about that, that'll also be as soon as I can. All right, so if you don't have any other questions, that'll be it for today, and I'll see you guys next week. Thanks, Professor. Yep. See you guys. Thanks, Professor. Yep. See ya.